What's cooking, <laughs> witches? Ah! <laughs> That's an X. Boy, she crossed me the wrong way. Just that one kidding. To the pile. Well, I guess it's kind of obvious now what we're talking about. Skulls. Just kidding. I'm getting my hair caught in a cast iron pot. We're talking about the witch's cauldron, babies. Yes, and check out this beautiful antique something something that we've purchased. And guess why? With our dowry. Why does Harry Potter always get his cooking pot and his best friend confused? Why? Because they're both cauldron. <laughs> I can't stand that man. <laughs> um, so... We're just going to talk a little bit about, I'm sure some of you know this, maybe some of you baby witches don't, so this will be a little history lesson for you. Um, so, of course, of course, um, the witch's cauldron has been a staple of witchcraft <gasps> and Wicca and Halloween for years and pizzas. years. So... They're typically black, cast iron. Um, you know, there is some uh, symbolism that comes from it being black, of course. Um, as we've talked in some of our other episodes, we know what the color black represents in reality. Um, and in the occult, it represents feminine energy, feminine mysteries and the womb and creation so what better to represent a dark space that is the um the womb than a cauldron so huh so um we get this idea that this represents uh feminine power now if you uh follow wicca uh, which is a type of witchcraft, um, a religious witchcraft. Mm -hmm. um, it, in their beliefs, they say that the cauldron represents the female on your altar. So your cauldron represents the womb, um, while, of course, the athame or the Dagger, wand sword. would represent the male energy or the phallus. Okay. I like the womb. Of course you do. Now, um, we also have seen this um, heavily associated with depictions or illustrations of witches, um, propaganda that it's surrounded kind of the witches. It's the same reason why a witch wears an apron. Okay. Because... See, um, she's back here with her apron yes, on. Yes, baby. Um, if, if she was, um, persecuted for being a witch, she was often, or for a while, um, a medicine woman, a wise woman, an older woman, and women in those days worked in the home and in the kitchen, mainly, and because of that, a lot of their medicine and their, uh, brain the food. Everything came from the pot. So creation and magic came from the pot. Mm -hmm. Kind of a little triple goddess. Well, yeah, kind of. And so because of that, um, when they wanted to, you know, help you spot a witch or to, you know, demonize further things, um, they looked for, okay, well, what's a symbol of a witch, okay. Well, they're always in the kitchen, standing around that pot, stirring uh, in that pot, stirring with that black in that cat, pot with that big black cat, and that they're always in there with their aprons on and their big conical hats and, and uh, sweeping with their brooms. Mm -hmm. So I think we can, uh, boys. I think we got something here. <laughs> so this became a tool of witchcraft or evil or magic. And of course, they can be used in this way. And in modern times, when we you go camping, you put your food in it. Of course, <coughs> we can use this in a magical way now, despite what they tried to do with it. Because it's a lot easier to contain fires in the woods. Absolutely, and you know you can keep your fire going easy in one of those. And 
not only that, you know, it's it's pretty practical. It's a I good mean, place to hide evidence. It's cast iron, you know. The so, fairies can't card it off. It's iron. Right. What are they going to do with it? So. You probably get high off touching it. Uh, um, so there's that whole thing, you know, where, you know, we've transmuted yet another tool um, that they have tried to take from us. And, you know, we use it to this day. You know, any occult shop or witchy store that you go into, you can find a cast iron or a metal um, cauldron mm -hmm. um, that is um, either with a pentacle or a triple goddess. Um, ours is like an antique. It's an actual cake. cauldron since it has the mm -hmm. tootsies. So, you know, these are things that, you know, have been picked up and have been ran with, you know, and I think that's great because, you know, to me, you know, Well, that also these... makes the price of them kind of go down because if I get a cauldron, I'm, they're going to think I'm a witch. Mm -hmm. Like, that's great. I'll take it. Absolutely. And, you know, if you think about, um, uh, like, Sarah Dwin, um, you think about... The Morgan. Uh, Morgan Baba Yaga. Um, all of these um, Crone Age witches, um, they are seen with their cauldron. Um, and, of course, these same witches that were persecuted were seen with their... Cauldrons. Okay. So there again we see that reoccurring theme of... Woman equals devil equals bad equals evil. Okay. Stirring the devil's pot. Have you ever heard that before? Where do you think that comes from? Right there, baby. So. Isn't she beautiful? The devil's pot is full of sin, Barbara. Ah. Another soul. Soup's on. Um, Little chickies. <laughs> Go <Good> on. <luck>. Um, <laughs> so. Um, this was kind of a short one, but, um, nonetheless, very, um, fun to think about, you know, I think sometimes we take for granted the stuff that's on our altar and our space and, you and know, certain symbols that we have that define femininity, that know, define our female craft. power and the craft itself, you know, cause this is ours and we've got to claim it. So, you know, camp it up, don't be scared to have your pot and your broom, and your hat, and your cat, and your cat, because, um, you know what? Life's too short to be worried about what other people think. Mm -hmm. Camp it up. Camp it up, witches. So until we see you guys in the next one, just, oh, hold it on there, Mercy. We will see you guys next time. It's spirited. Oh, of course it it's is. It's getting ready to be spirited away.